Hello again and good evening. I'm Steve Eager. We begin with breaking news. 17-year-old Alexis Mateo has been arrested by Arlington police after they say her boyfriend beat her child to death on July the 4th. Fox Sports Brandon Todd broke news of this arrest on Twitter about 20 minutes ago. He's live with more details about this arrest and, and, and the specific charges this, this mother faces. Brandon? Yeah, exactly. Alexis Mateo arrested within the last hour, arrested in Weatherford. For it. She'll be brought here to the Arlington Jail. She faces two charges, one, tampering with evidence, and two, injury to a child. Tampering with evidence will carry a $100,000 bond. The injury to a child, I'm told, will carry a $25,000 bond. And again, an arrest warrant affidavit kind of spells out the tampering with evidence. Uh, as we had reported yesterday, uh, the search warrant affidavit kind of detailed how she helped Joshua Beard move the body of her uh, small child, the one and a half year old daughter. And uh, that is kind of what is detailed also in her arrest warrant affidavit, which brought forth that charge that she has. And again, today, friends and family of Alexis are coming forward really now to come to her defense. And I'm sure she's upset and scared and traumatized. Over the phone from his home in San Antonio, Ricardo Bateo says he has yet to speak with his daughter, Alexis. This is a picture of the 17-year-old with her boyfriend, Joshua Beard, from Facebook. She told Arlington police that 20-year-old Beard killed her one-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Talia, July 4th. Ricardo says his daughter loved Talia, and information in the search warrant affidavit describing how Alexis helped Beard bury Talia after she was killed may have been Alexis's fear of her boyfriend. I can only assume that my daughter feared for her life. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't fear for their life after they've just witnessed their child slain? It was a question that Arlington police could not address at this point. Was Alexis so afraid of violence from Beard that she didn't turn him in after witnessing him killing her child? It was the same account we heard from one of Alexis's close friends. I know her mom was very scared because she was scared of Josh hurting them. Beard's violence toward Bateo was referenced by detectives. According to the search warrant, Beard then started yelling and hitting Bateo. And later that night, Beard began hitting Bateo. And as Beard was allegedly stomping on the toddler, Beard hit and choked Bateo when she tried to stop him. Beard was not the father of the child and had been dating Alexis just a few months. The biological father of Tylea, Chris Moore, is a Marine and has taken the death of his daughter very hard. In an exchange with her father on Facebook, Alexis says, Chris and I have been together this whole time and are trying to grieve together, especially him. I know I deserve no love from you or anyone. Her father had nothing but anger toward Beard. I want his head. I want justice. I want him to fear the fear and the agony and the pain that he has brought down on us. What a coward. What a coward that he is. Now that arrest warrant affidavit for Alexis Bateo, again, as I mentioned, is for the tampering with evidence charge. Once she's booked into Arlington Jail, then she will be charged with injury to a child, I'm told. Steve? All right, Brandon, I'm looking at the arrest warrant that you got, too. Uh, there's a, a few interesting and, and quite disturbing uh, things that this, uh, this mother was able to fall asleep shortly after the beating that she witnessed and, and then woke up and, and the, the suspect beard saying that she needed to get the little demon and that, that, that being the now dead child, which is, is horrible. But I, I, as far as evidence, I think you're going to confirm this. I don't know which way this will go, but the police were able to get video of the two beard and the mother in the Walmart while they were gathering supplies to bury, allegedly gathering supplies to bury the child. Right, and much of the things that you mentioned, the, the disturbing details, a lot of that is exactly the same as it is in the search warrant affidavit from yesterday from Josh Beard. A lot of those details describing uh, the alleged crime are the same. The way it differs is what you just mentioned, where they have surveillance video from the Walmart in Weatherford, where the video apparently shows Josh Beard and Alexis both paying cash for the shovels and the gloves that they used in burying uh, Talia's body. So uh, that part is different in this uh, new arrest warrant affidavit, as well as uh, the detective's visit to the Tarrant County Medical Examiner's office. At that point, when they visited that office, they observed the body uh, that it appeared to be 
uh, by every description that they had, that of little Talia. Now, Brad, let me, let me check. You've covered a lot of stories. I'm not going to say any like this one, but some of you know different circumstances. But if if her story washed with police, her saying that she was scared and she she just kind of followed orders, they don't police don't generally charge in a situation like that. So this seems to indicate they don't believe that she only acted out of fear. Correct? Well, they haven't yet discussed that. That would go toward her defense, um, and, and it's just not the way that these homicide detectives work. And the information that they give, the information they work on, police work on, is she guilty, why is she guilty, and then they work toward that. Um, in, in this case, uh, they haven't yet discussed the injury to a child charge. If you read through this affidavit, it, it deals with all the tampering with evidence we mentioned where you know, the details for, came, that came out yesterday of her and Beard burying the body. Well, there's where the tampering with evidence charge comes in. The injury to a child, it's unclear, Steve, and, and you read through this. It, it doesn't really spell out why they're charging her with injury to a child, and it may be what you mentioned, some of those details about how she fell asleep uh, right after he was uh, alleged to have beaten the child. Uh, these are details that we're, I guess we're going to learn tomorrow. It's, we just don't know right now. The communications uh, ladder that happens within the police department from the detectives to the communications department and then disseminates out to the public and the media hasn't yet covered that part. And I, I'm sure they want to be really careful, too, and that's understandable. All right, Brandon Todd.